Good evening, church. I'm Bishop Peggy Johnson, and we are living in the overflow. We thank God for each one of you who have joined uh, our meeting tonight. I know that there's lots of things you could be doing tonight, but you thought it not robbery to join this important meeting to help vote on our rules. But you know, one of the most important things that people of God can do is to pray. And I know you're all aware that this week has had some heightened anxiety around the, the trial out in Minnesota and many issues in our country that are concerning. And so I just ask for a season of prayer that will be led by our appointed cabinet this evening, just to lift up some concerns and, and know that you are God and all things will be well, all manner of things will be well. And so at this time, I'm calling upon Reverends Archie, Sa, Davis, and Blake to lead us to the throne of grace. Reverend Archie. Let us pray. Dear God, we start off our prayer to you on this night, giving you thanks uh, for the man, George Floyd, whom his family is mourning. They describe this man as grounded and organized and they described him as a light and that's who he was to them. And so we ask you, oh God, to be with Ruby Floyd, his stepmother, be with his brothers, Philonis and Rodney, be with his seven-year-old daughter, Gianna, who was courageous enough to speak boldly in the last few months. May this family feel your comfort and know your peace. And even as they grieve, remind them of the hope of eternal life and for him and for all those who ran the race, fought the good fight, finished the course, and kept the faith. Amen. Out of grace, we lift up our prayer for people in Minnesota who have carried the wounds and agonies through the process of the Chauvin trial. God, we humbly admit how hard it is to even imagine and, and understand the incredible pain of the Black community as they have lived through such a time embedded with trauma and constant pain. Come, Lord, to comfort and heal them as we pray for peace in the midst of truth telling and empathy in the midst of grief. Oh God, we pray for action that leads to healing and greater justice for all of God's children. The community of color, Black, Hispanic, Asian, Pacific Islander, and Native American sisters and brothers, your people are still suffering from ongoing racial violence and injustice. Oh God, help us to experience the power of healing as the people who have been wonderfully and fearfully created in your image. Help us not leave a legacy of racial violence and injustice for our next generation that we love so much. We pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Lord of peace and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lord, please be in our midst as we come together as the body to lift up our country and our leaders. Please protect our country from the division that challenges our ability to live lives pleasing you. Defend the vulnerable and the voiceless and bring justice to those who have suffered injustice. When our eyes do not see the gravity of racial justice, shake us from our slumber and open our eyes. When out of fear we are frozen into inaction, give us the spirit of bravery. When we try our best but say the wrong things, give us the spirit of humility. When it come, becomes easier to point fingers outward, help us to examine our hearts. God of truth, in your wisdom, enlighten us. God of hope and kindness, we ask God that you heal us. Creator of all people, in your generosity, guide us. Racism, oh God, breaks your heart and it breaks our heart for what breaks yours. 
oh Lord. Ever-present God, you called us to be in relationship with one another and promised to dwell wherever two or three are gathered. In our community, we are many different people. We come from many different places. We have different cultures open our hearts that we may be bold in finding the richness of inclusion and the treasures of diversity among us. Realign and unify your people in your son, Jesus Christ, who is the author of our faith, the one who blessed us, the one who kept us, the one who woke us up this morning as we cry out unto you in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The Lord, the words of your prophet Micah, chapter 6, 6 through 8, reminds us, how can I stand up before God and show proper respect to the high God? Should I bring an, off, an armload of offerings topped off with yearling calves? Would God be impressed with thousands of rams, with buckets and barrels of olive oil? Would he be moved if I sacrificed my firstborn child, my precious baby, to cancel my sin? But he's already made it plain how to live, church, what we are to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love, and don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. As, as members of the church and as witnesses of Jesus Christ, we cannot be quiet so that we can be comfortable. We have to speak out. We have to be voices in this wilderness, in a world and a country filled with systemic racism that comes from the pits of hell. It's our job to call it out. It's no accident that Micah listed act justly first. There was no justice for George Floyd. Justice would have been George Floyd still alive. And that is our job to call out these injustices and work tirelessly as witnesses of Jesus Christ into this world until every person is equal in the eyes of the courts and the eyes of the land as they are in the eyes of God. So help us, Lord, to be a bold church, to not be afraid, to not be afraid of stepping on people's toes because we are to be foot stompers for Jesus until every person is seen as you see them, as a precious gift, a precious creation, a work of your hands. Give us a boldness to, to be the church, seriously. In the name of the Lord. Yeah, I guess all God's people said amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Thank you, Cabinet. I appreciate your uh, joining us for this webinar. And at this time, we'll invite them to join the, the participants. And we'll continue on with our, our webinar. And remembering always to continue to lift up those in need, and particularly during this time in our country. So at this time, I'm calling the meeting to order. And participating in this meeting with me tonight are our secretary, Reverend Jackie Ford, our director of Connectional Ministries, Rob Townsend, um, Colleen Phoenix, our conference lay leader, and tech support is provided by Doug Lanter and Amy Body. And so at this time, I will turn the meeting over for a moment to our conference secretary. Thank you, Bishop. The purpose of this webinar is to vote on the special rules of order for the upcoming virtual annual conference, June 10th through 12th, 2021. If at any time you need to ask a question or get clarification, please go to the control panel on the bottom of your Zoom screen and click the Q&A icon and type in the area named type your question here. If you have a question, please use the Q&A feature and not the chat box. The chat box is for chatting. So please use the Q&A feature. Thank you. Bishop. Thank you, thank you. And now at this time I'd have a brief devotion. So let's uh, pull the screen back up, thank you. And I'd like to read from the Old Testament prophet Micah. 
just one short verse, Micah chapter four, two. But you who fear my name, that's God's name, you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've always loved this phrase, the sun of righteousness. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the book of Malachi, but you know, when I think of the son of righteousness, I think of the S-O-N of righteousness, Jesus Christ. And years ago, I don't know if you still have these in your churches, but we used to have these things called chrismons that were white uh, decorations you put on Christmas trees in churches. And each of the symbols that was put on the tree was a symbol, a monogram of Christ. And one of the monograms was the son of righteousness. And it was a sun, like, you know, the sun in the sky, but it had a whole lot of gold glitter on it because it was just beaming and glittering like the sun and like the word righteousness. And so um, this is kind of a symbolic uh, prophecy telling us about Jesus coming among us as the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. And I really love that part about the verse where it says healing in his wings. I hope you know that the theme of our annual conference this year is healing. Lord, heal us. And we certainly know there's a lot of need for healing, right? This world is full of a lot of brokenness. There's physical ills. There's emotional ills, relational brokenness, political, denominational the Lord brings us healing through the saving relationship with Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. That's the main reason we have church. God brings us healing from our sin and guilt and grief, as well as physical and emotional healing. The healing in his wings conjures up for me an image of a bird just hovering over us from above. The Hebrew word for wings is kanaf which also means the rays or the edges or the borders. This healing wing of God reaches down to every part and parcel of your life, right down to the borders of your being for a complete healing and restoration. This healing of Jesus is promised for those who fear God's name. And of course, in this sentence, the word fear doesn't mean being afraid of God so much as it means to revere and to honor and to respect God. That's the first step for any relationship with God. It goes on to say that the relationship with God, this healing brings great joy, like a baby calf being released to play in a pasture. One of the joys of Facebook is you get to watch all kinds of little videos of your friends, right? And I have a former student that is living in Missouri and she has a very small, goat farm and she raises goats in her backyard and I get to watch her pregnant goat Yolanda and finally Yolanda gave birth to her baby goats and oh I didn't know how goats were when they were born they just kind of start jumping around I mean they don't have time to just sit around like human babies they just start jumping for joy and they look like they have springs on their feet I just can't get over goats now I don't want a goat but I think they're very interesting but I imagine that's kind of like the imagery of this scripture that we too need to be bursting with joy because of the Lord the Lord is the source of our joy this Lord's joy is our strength. We need to be too blessed to be stressed, trusting that God's going to make everything right and the Lord will rise with healing in his wings. So may we enter into holy conferencing this season, once again virtually, with a sense of reverence for God, anticipating what God can do among us, even as we gather here tonight, and that we might be healed of our divisions and our hurts, and that we might have respect for God and for one another. May we live in the righteousness of the Son of God. Let us pray. Oh, Son of God, we thank you for your word. We pray that each day we keep it inside of our hearts, that we might go out and live for you in healing ways and in joy. Amen. 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 And now we'll turn our meeting back over to our conference secretary.
Thank you, Bishop. The agenda for this meeting is as follows. Review the rules of order and answer any questions. Go over voting instructions, take the vote and announce the results. Then we'll end with prayer. I will now read the rules of order. Meetings. The 2021 annual conference session will be a virtual conference and not in person, face to face, presented through a Zoom webinar format. Number two, the 2021 annual conference session will meet the following days, times for the following purposes. Clergy session, June 10th, 2021, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Laity session, June 10th, 2021, 1 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Plenary session, June 11th, 2021, 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Memorial service, June 12th, 2021, 10 a.m. by invitation only in person and Facebook Live. Ordination service, June 12th, 2021, 2 o'clock p.m. by invitation only in person and Facebook Live. Organization, number one, the 2021 annual conference shall convene to transact business as required by the discipline of the United Methodist Church and to act upon matters properly brought before it through previously submitted resolutions. The deadline to submit resolutions is May 15th, 2021. The bar of the conference, number two, the bar of the conference shall be the duly elected members of the annual conference registered for the 2021 annual conference session. Number three, members of the 2021 annual conference shall be clergy members of the annual conference lay persons elected as a lay delegate of their congregation and lay equalization delegates. Number four, the agenda of the 2021 annual conference session will be published in advance in as many formats as possible. Number five, after each resolution is presented, any member desiring to address the conference will use the Zoom chat feature to indicate the desire to speak. When recognized by the chair, the member shall first state clearly said member's name and the charge represented. Number six, when addressing the conference, members will be limited to speaking for no more than three minutes. At the one minute mark, the presiding officer will issue a time warning and after that time has elapsed, the presiding officer may interrupt the member and terminate permission to speak. Number seven, members may only speak to the resolution that is currently on the floor before the conference or to offer an amendment to the resolution that is currently on the floor before the conference. Number eight, Debate for each resolution will be limited to two persons speaking for the resolution or amendment and two persons speaking against the resolution or amendment. Number nine, voting on amendments to resolutions and final perfected resolutions will take place by the Zoom polling feature. Votes will be taken in the format of yes or no. Abstentions will be tallied based on the number of participants who do not vote on the Zoom poll. Attendance, number one. Attendance of the members of the conference is expected except in cases of emergency. Those requesting to be excused must make the requests in writing to the conference secretary. Number two, in the case of the anticipated absence of a local church lay member, arrangements should be made to have the alternate local church lay member registered. Access, number one. Members of the annual conference are responsible for ensuring that all necessary technology is in place and working properly to participate in the Zoom webinar 
or watch by live stream. Number two, those who do not have access to the necessary technology are to contact their congregation for help in arranging access to the Zoom webinar or live stream. Rules. These rules apply only to the 2021 annual conference session. At the adjournment of the 2021 session, the rules of order approved at the 2019 annual conference session will once again become the rules of order until the 2022 annual conference session. Do you have any questions? If so, please go to the Q&A feature on the control panel and type your question. And Rob will be there to take any questions that you may have. <clears throat> So we had a question uh, about proposing an amendment. So uh, if our chair would recognize okay. in the chat feature. Okay, we will, we will recognize the proposal. I can't see the whole thing. Can you read it, Rob? I can see. Uh, yes. So again, what, what we had um, what we had uh, the, the arrangement that we made is if you recognize uh, Pastor Garnell, then Doug can move her over to a panelist so that she can speak. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm recognizing her, but I guess okay. I, yeah, just, I was yeah. waiting for the official. Go ahead. Know. Give me one second. I didn't see the whole chat. So. So hold on, Amy, uh, we're going to bring you over. I didn't realize I was off video. OK. Um, so um, I propose an amendment that, oh, sorry, Amy Yarnell, Wesley Dover. I propose that we amend the rules so that uh, rather than limiting debate to two voices from each side, that the debate be allowed to have four voices on each side. And I saw somebody had seconded it, right, Rob, in the chat? Uh, Kelsey Spires seconded Kelsey it. Kelsey Spires oh, did. Perfect, thank you. It's yeah. been moved and seconded. Would you like to speak to it? Um, thank you. I, I think that having debate at annual conference is really important. And I think that having uh, up to four people will allow for us to have a more full debate while also maintaining time restrictions. Is there anyone like to speak against it? Now you posed a problem for me here because we haven't voted the rules yet. So how can you amend rules that we haven't voted? <laughs> but I guess we um, well, we have to figure out how to do that. This is good practice, right? Um, okay, so we have um, no one else speaking. Anyone else want to speak in favor of it? I don't see anybody wanting to speak against it. Uh, Bishop Pastor Vaughn Hayden would like to speak against it, it looks like. All right, can we? Can we conjure up Reverend Hayden into the into the whatever you call this, the panelist box? He's on the way. All right, thank you, thank you. Yes, Bishop Johnson, uh, Vaughn Hayden on loan to Baltimore Washington Conference. Welcome. Well, tell us what you'd like to say against it. I just think that uh, since we're, I think we're still doing virtual conferencing. And uh, the first time we're, we're actually allowing amendments, I don't know that we want the conference to go too long by having too many voices to speak. I think uh, recognizing two for each is, uh, is fair. All right, thank you. We've had a speech in favor, speech opposed. Anyone else want to speak? We don't have to have all the speeches, you know, folks, <laughs> but you can, you know, speak in favor of it would be in order if anyone else wants to get attention at this point. Do you see anybody, Rob? Yes, uh, Carl Sammons would like to speak for the amendment. All right, Carl, you are in order. Uh, 
Can you find Carl, Doug? <laughs> yeah, he should be on his way. All right. We'll have to see how this goes. You and video. Okay, here we go. Um, I, am I muted? No, you sound really good. Okay, very good. Um, I would like to speak in favor of it. I'm concerned that two, um, two opposing views for and against might not be enough. I fully concur with what Amy said about, you know, you could have two people show up and odds are they might say the exact same thing, but that happening with more would allow for more robust debate. And I do think that would be allowed in the time frame, considering the uh, limitations involved um, with each speaker. Thank you. Now be our second speech in favor. Is there anyone like to speak opposed? Remember folks, use the chat feature to be recognized and then we'll pull you over. We have David Garrett would like to speak in favor of the amendment. That is not an order at the moment. We need to have someone speaking opposed. Is there anyone speaking opposed out there? Seeing none, I guess. Reverend Archie. Oh, oh Reverend Archie is is speaking against. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So, uh, Reverend Archie, you are in order. He's being promoted. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Joe Archie, Wilmington District Superintendent. I oppose for the same reason that. Reverend Dr. Hayden opposes. Okay, and that would be time frame or whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, we've had two speeches, if four and two against. Um, I guess uh, we still have someone wanting to speak in favor. Um, so I guess- yes. David, David Garrett. Garrett. David Garrett, you may speak in favor. He should be on his way. All right. This is good practice for you, Doug. Yeah. This, this is David Garrett from Epworth in Rehoboth Beach. I would like to speak in favor of the amendment. All right. Um, I think over the past couple of years, the annual conference has been uh, too quick to cut off debate. And having four speak in favor and four against is by no means exhausting those who want to speak one way or the other. And I think... I, I completely agree with the rationale for the amendment that it allows more voices and more expression of commitment and uh, uh, on both sides of the question at hand. So I completely favor the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, since we don't have any rules of how, how many speeches we're allowed to have, we're just gonna keep rolling here until the body's exhausted from it. Is there anyone here now wanna speak against? Is there anyone else wanting to speak in favor? Okay. It I think looks like Dr. Vanessa Lee. Is speaking in favor or against? Well, it doesn't matter, I guess. <laughs> Against. He's speaking against. Okay, Dr. Lee, you are in order. Give me one second. Should be on the way. Yeah, I'm ready. It takes that long to get to the microphone anyway, so it's not a different amount of time, I suppose. Just feels a little different. Vanessa Stephens Lee, New Zion, Laurel, call the question. Okay, call for the question. That would be ending debate. Um, you know, I'm not sure how, <laughs> usually I just say, you need two thirds for that, and I gotta have two thirds to do that. Um, I'm just gonna, go out on a limb here and just ask if there's anybody else wanting to speak. And then I think we're about ready to vote. So I'm going to just take uh, some Episcopal authority here and um, 
ask Doug if he would create a poll that we can vote this amendment. And you all know what's in front of us. It's, it's extending that part of the rule that says, um, instead of two speeches in favor, two speeches opposed, it'll be four and four. And we've had two speeches, three, two speeches in favor, three in favor and uh, two opposed and one call for the question. So at this time, uh, whenever you're ready, Doug, please drop down the poll and you all can, can vote. And then once you vote and you press submit, then you wait and we'll give you an answer and we'll verbally tell you how many voted this and how many voted that and how many didn't vote at all to our extensions. And you'll see the answers come up in percentages, but we'll give you actual numbers as well. Okay. So Doug, can you produce the slide that does that? Uh, the slide to show everybody how to vote. Yes. Give me. Okay. One second. So you understand what you're voting for folks. This is to extend it to, to four. That's I don't know if Reverend Jackie wants to go over this now. I mean, you kind of just gave a brief yeah. explanation, but while just we're say one more time, Jackie. I think Reverend Jackie can say it again. You can never say anything about times. So this is the voting instructions. So we'll review the instructions. So you must have, this is, this is what well, we're hearing now, but uh, for the uh, annual conference, you must have access to a computer or device to participate in the webinar voting. You will not be able to vote by calling in on a non-smartphone. This will be how you will vote during each session. And so tonight, um, well, Bishop, now, Bishop Johnson has already announced it's time to vote, for, at least for this amendment. A voting poll will be opened on your screen and you'll be able to select between two options, yes or no. And so remember, we will um, do the difference between the number of participants and the number of yes and no's to get the abstentions. <clears throat> You'll be given two minutes to make your selection, choose your answer and click the button. If you do not click submit, your vote will not be counted. Once that time is up, the vote is closed. When Bishop Johnson calls for the results, they'll be displayed for everyone to see and yours truly, Reverend Jackie, will confirm the final total. Okay. We're voting on the amendment. When the poll drops down, just go right ahead and vote. And there it is. Do you approve the 21? Nope, that's the wrong one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong one. Wrong one. Sorry. We'll have them all in order. This is just one we weren't expecting. Okay, here's amendment to poll number one. Are you in favor of the proposed amendment, which is four and four instead of two and two for debate? So vote now, yes or no, and then submit down at the bottom. So you have to do two clicks. So Doug, I don't see the poll today. <laughs> I see it. Okay. And uh, Bishop, just to clarify, we do have a question. Just want to clarify a vote yes in this mm -hmm. poll means you want to increase it to four speakers on Correct. each side. That was the amendment. And so if you vote <clears throat> no, you don't want four. You would rather keep the two. So vote yes or no to the four and then click submit and we'll give you time. And don't give us the results until we give everybody two minutes to get get this thing in their head. Because but every, everybody on the panelists, you guys can see it and vote, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm I can see it. Yeah, I yeah. work here. Okay. I'm just, I'm not, it says. I go with the will of the body. So we have about 50 seconds left. All right. You can check your email, check your Facebook. Okay, 10 seconds. All right, closing the poll. 
right. You ready for the results? You ready, Reverend Jackie? Yes. Far right. away. She'll read the. Okay. So in favor, 130. Opposed, 87. Abstentions, 23. Okay. So, it does carry. There will be the rules will be amended to say four in favor and four opposed instead of two and two. Okay. Um, we've given you the instructions on how to vote on these rules. Um, are there any other questions? We'll take a few more minutes because that's all we have to do tonight is vote on these rules. So any questions for the in the question box, Reverend Rob? Uh, yes, Bishop. Um, Bill Westbrook asked, I believe our previous rules, which we're operating on until we vote these in tonight, allow for the question to be called after three speakers for and three speakers against. Will that rule still be in place or will it be superseded by this amended rule? It'll be superseded. I would, like yeah, I, would I would rule that we just superseded it. It will be. Yeah. Well, that, now that's that's for calling the question after three. What we just voted on was we could have four. Mm -hmm. I would think. But I, I don't. I don't think what we just amended superseded that rule that you could call the question after three. Okay. You, you, but you could have four on each side. You can have four, but suppose somebody calls sooner. Which is what he's asking. Yeah, we'll get back to you on that. Okay. Well, we have an annual conference. All we'll put our heads together and figure that out. Uh, certainly, okay. uh, very unusual, <laughs> and we don't usually uh, have this kind of technology platform to to work all this through. So we'll get back to you on that before we do our first vote on Friday, the eleventh of June. We'll we'll make sure we have that figured out. Thank you, Bill. Any other the questions? next question is from Tom, uh, Reverend Tom Passmore. How are amendments to resolutions supposed to be presented during the annual conference session? Like we always, when we you know have a, a, a resolution is put before you, and the maker will present it, and then if there's a resolution, then that's when you put it in the chat and you get recognized, just like we just did. That's all we have, Bishop. Okay, so those are our questions. And we're now going to devote on the rules and that's all we're gonna to do tonight, folks. So uh, the poll will drop down. And again, um, we'll do just like we did with this amendment. You know, poll drop down, you vote yes for these amended rules or no. And click submit and wait two minutes and you'll know what happened <laughs> two minutes from now? So when the poll drops down. There you go. Do you approve of the 2021 annual conference special rules of order, which the which has now been amended? Yes or no, submit. And Doug, you tell us when we have a minute left. One minute left. When we get the annual conference, we'll probably not need two minutes for every vote, but we're given a little extra time tonight just so people get used to it.
30 seconds. All right, and the poll is closed. All right, and we'll turn this back over to our secretary. And so we have 214 yes, eight no, 14 abstentions. The rules for this, the special rules of order for the 2021 annual conference session are approved. Thank you, thank you. And now just a few quick reminders, um, especially important dates, which are our next slide, our district events, pre-conference briefings, really important folks. And if you can't go to the one that is the night that your district's on, we'll go to one of these because they'll all be pretty much the same and they're all gonna be Zoom. So, you know, what's not the law of no driving. So Wilmington's Tuesday, May 18th. Dover's Wednesday, May 19th. Easton, Tuesday, May 25th. Salisbury, Wednesday, May 26th. They all start at 6.30, so you'll have the rest of your evening. Now our resolutions haven't been posted yet because we're still gathering them. The drop dead deadline is May 15th and we still are gathering a few more uh, disaffiliations. So that's why we've extended that. But for sure, come to this meeting having studied these so that you have real intelligent questions and you can ferret out some of the issues ahead of time and be prepared for when we do get at annual conference and debate will be more streamlined when people are prepared and do their homework. Next slide. And just a reminder about the dates for annual conference, Thursday, June 10th, clergy session 9 a.m., lady session 1 p.m. And then ordination rehearsal is at Connection Community United Methodist Church at 7 p.m. That's just for the people involved in the ordination service, of course, but very important. Next slide. And then annual conference, the business itself will be Friday, June the 11th, starting at 9 a.m. And it will be a drop dead cutoff at 1 p.m. because we do have a, a session starting at 2 p.m., a teaching session, and we really need to have a little break in between. So we're gonna have to handle our business expeditiously. Next slide. And then of course our memorial service, communion service is Saturday, June the 12th at the Connection Community Church by invitation only beginning at 10 a.m. They'll be live streaming of course. And then next slide, our ordination service and it will be ordination. There won't be any commissioning this year because we do not have anyone in the commissioning class but we do have two ordinands. And that again will be at com community, Connection Community Church beginning at 2 p.m. by invitation only with live streaming available. So we're looking forward to a, a wonderful evening and afternoon and day in the Lord during annual conference session 2021, which will be my last annual conference session. So I hope it will be indeed a good one as I will enjoy seeing you all one last time. And so I'd like to call upon our conference lay leader, Colleen Phoenix, and she'll bring to us the closing prayer. Thank you, Bishop. Let us pray. Lord God and our Redeemer, we exalt you for you have indeed lifted us up this evening. We ask for your help and you came alongside us and guided us to write this meeting by giving us an understanding of the materials we discussed for our annual conference session, Special Rules of Order. And we praise you, O oh God, for your insight into every decision we needed to make by guiding us in the areas where we needed to act. We thank you for all that was accomplished in this meeting and for the precious gift of time that you enabled us to glorify you. As we end this meeting, we ask that you continue to lead and guide us for the sake of your holy and precious name. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. God bless. Amen. Amen.